welcome to First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ here in Whiting, Iowa, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We'd like to welcome all of those who are joining us online as well. We will begin this morning uh, with announcements. They are on the back of your bulletin. Uh, we are still collecting monetary donations through the months of April and May for the Orphan Brain Train Project. Uh, there's information about my graduation, which will be in person or, or online on May 14th, and uh, some other information about graduation coming up. The Memorial Day service is Monday, May 30th at 9.30 a.m. at the Whiting Christian Church. And our church garage sale will be Saturday, June 4th at Pratt's Garage. More details to follow. All donated items need to be priced. Are there any other uh, announcements that didn't make it into the bulletin? Yes, Steve. Uh, it's time for our annual deep cleaning of the church. And there's a sign-up sheet, two sign-up sheets actually in the back. Uh, you better hurry. There are only four areas left because the church council uh, volunteers signed up for everything except uh, four areas. Of course, those may be the four toughest, but you know, that's what you get. You get. <laughs> 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 and then um, I have joy at almost exactly the same time and on the same day as Jesse's graduation, our granddaughter, Brenda Pike, graduates from Iowa State after three years. And uh, as you know, she was raised in this church and was very active and very loyal. And I kind of hope when Troy was here, I was going to remind him that when he was a little baby, he was the baby Jesus when Brenna was Mary in one of the Christmas bands. But anyway, uh, she has a job in Lawrence, Kansas, and will be moving down to Kansas upon graduation. And she always has fond memories of this church. And then the last thing on the garage sale, um, if you can, we really appreciate you bringing your items to the garage either uh, Thursday or Friday. Uh, that would be June 2nd and June 3rd. Uh, between the hours of about 4 and 7. And Laura Nelberg has kindly offered to be in charge of that, uh, but I'll be around too to help all the time. So. Thank you, Jesse. And today is Mother's Day, so we want to ha wish Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers, or all of those, and all of those who have ever been in the mother role. Okay. Yes. Going along with that, we do have carnations in the back, and mothers make make at least two, I say, when we leave. So proud. So. Yes, um, take all the carnations in honor of Mother's Day. And then, kind of with Mother's Day, but not necessarily, because it can be a father or it can be anybody, we still have a sign-up sheet in the back to help with children's messages during worship. So. And then to go along with uh, the theme of Mother's Day, I have wearing a stole of it's all the children of the world. Uh, this is another one of those stoles that was donated to me by uh, Bart Weir, who was a retired minister started attending uh, Mayflower here recently. Okay, any other announcements? Joys or concerns? Alrighty. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Excuse me, sorry.
And let us go to God in prayer with a few moments of our own uh, silent uh, reflection. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all of the gifts that you have blessed us with, especially our mothers and all of those who have been like mothers for us. Lord, we lift up to you our joys and concerns. We continue to keep the people of Ukraine in our prayers and that a peaceful solution would resolve that conflict. Lord, we lift up all of those in our community this day who are hurting or sick or ill. We pray that your assurance and peace would be with them and that they would find see your wholeness. Lord, we lift up uh, all of those in our world who are struggling to find meaning and purpose. We pray that our doors would be a place for them to see the good news of Christ in a world where it is hard to make relationships Lord, we lift up all of our homebound and those who are residents at Pleasant View. We ask that your peace be with them and that they know that we are always, they are always in our hearts as members of your beloved community. Now, as we lift all these prayers up to you, let us all say together the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us by boldly saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. We gather once more as a great multitude from various peoples and places we've come. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power be to our God. We gather once more to shout hallelujah. Salvation belongs to the Holy One. Worship day and night the one who guides us to the springs of life. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power be to our God. Let us pray. God, our shepherd, restorer of our souls, the one who calls us to nap in green pastures, we enter into this moment of worshipful gathering, trusting that you will guide us along the paths of righteousness. Wherever we may be in the world, let us know the comforting presence of your rod and staff. 
We are expectant, O oh God, that our fears will fade, that our cups will overflow, and that your goodness and mercy will accompany, accompany us in this hour and beyond. Now let us worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Now we will be using the black hymnal, the New Century hymnal. You'll, you'll need to find that under your pew. And uh, opening song is 247, My Shepherd is the Living God.
Friends, hear the good news. God believes in us, even when our belief in God is challenged. God's grace and mercy abounds, and in God and Christ we are forgiven. Amen. Now it's time for the children's message, and uh, I'll just do that from up here. <laughs> Uh, so today is Mother's Day, and one of the primary texts that we have on this Sunday, and it's always a theme that always comes up this time in Easter in the lectionary, is thinking about God as a shepherd and Jesus as the good shepherd. It's commonly known as Good Shepherd Sunday. It's one of those liturgical days that's kind of forgotten about. Most people don't really recognize a whole lot. So in a lot of ways, uh, just like a shepherd, uh, mothers play that role too. They make sure as we grow up we're fed and that uh, we're safe and that you know they, they protect us just like a shepherd would for his sheep. So, the shepherd is just like, uh, leads the sheep, just like a mother leads her children. And so, um, we all can, can gain something from that, that image. Um, and uh, that says a lot about motherhood and about um, a reflection about um, a part of who God is for us as well. Let's say a little prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the mothers in our lives uh, and how they are like the shepherd who leads us, um, that protect us, that lead us to those still waters, uh, that ensure our safety. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first reading for this morning is Psalm 23. Let us listen for the word of God in Holy Scripture. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Our second hymn uh, is Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us, number 252 in your New Century Hymn.
Second reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. Let us listen for the word of God in Scripture. Now at Joppa there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydia was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing the tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he sure showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. This is the good news of Christ. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In our scripture reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we are introduced to Tabitha from Joppa. And she is a disciple of Jesus. She is the first woman in Scripture to be specifically given the title of disciple. It says that she was devoted to good works and acts of charity. But other than that, there is not much else that we know about her until Peter goes to her home uh, when he is requested to after she has died. This is the only story in Scripture where Tabitha is even mentioned. When Peter enters the house, he is taken upstairs to a room where her body is. In that upstairs room, there are a group of widows that stand around Peter, weeping and showing him all of the tunics and clothing that Tabitha made while they were with her. As a pastor, I am often asked to officiate at funerals and memorial services for individuals that I never really knew very well. And like Peter, when I visit with the family and with the friends of the loved one who has died, I learn a lot about who that person was through the memories of their families and friends and the things that their family and friends show me that meant the most to them. The widows who were her closest friends and were at her home when she died tell us a lot about who Tabitha was. In the biblical world, widows were one of the most vulnerable members of society that depended upon the charity of others in order to survive. The making of the tunics and clothing was something that the widows would have benefited from. We know that she was devoted to good works and acts of charity, so the picture that emerges about Tabitha is that she was a mother to this community of widows. She cared for them by providing them clothing, and giving them a sense of security by giving them a place to live. I am sure we can all think of many people 
who were saints of this local community and church who were like Tabitha. I believe that there are some Tabithas here today with us sitting in the pews. She knew and followed the God of Jesus who was her shepherd. Her story would have resonated with Peter because it was Peter who was commissioned by the risen Christ to feed the sheep of Jesus. And this is what Tabitha was doing. She was living out the calling that Christ had given to the whole church. When I was naked, did you clothe me, Jesus says. Psalm 23 is a much-beloved scripture passage that I have heard spoken at multiple memorial services, and it is a passage that I have read myself when I have officiated at multiple memorial services. The image of God as a shepherd is an interesting one, though, when you think about it. It's hard for us in our modern world to identify God with a shepherd because shepherds are really not a part of our everyday lives that much anymore like they were in the biblical world. The hardest part that many of us have when we think about this metaphor uh, for God is that if God is the shepherd, then we are the sheep. And sheep are not very smart. And so we have to imagine, are we really that dumb? But maybe we are in God's eyes. In the Hebrew Bible, David, who was Israel's most beloved king, began as a shepherd. Many in the Jewish Christian tradition believe that it was David who wrote the Psalms. While today many scholars doubt that David really did write all the Psalms, we really don't know who did. It is possible that he may have wrote some of the Psalms, maybe not all of them. It's easy to see why they came to that conclusion because when you read Psalm 23, it's from the perspective of a shepherd and that's what David did. Um, so he was looking at how God applied to him in his everyday work. Now we often look at shepherds as being the ideal role to have. However, even in the ancient biblical world, the shepherd was not the most glamorous job to have. One of the unattractive things about shepherds is that they stunk because they were spending all of their time with the sheep. A friend of mine, after he saw me dress up as the Easter Bunny for the Pleasant View Easter egg hunt and then for the children's moment during our Easter Sunday service asked me whether I had seen the British TV comedy The Vicar of Dibley and I said no and so I decided to start watching the show on my smart TV and I laughed when one of the characters of the show that sits on the church council of this small country parish in the Church of England is a local shepherd. When he arrives for the church council meeting, the other members of the council always complain about how much he stinks. <laughs> he is very raunchy, and he's always saying goofy things. He is not a very attractive character. He does not fit the glamorous vision that we often have when we read about the shepherd of Psalm 23. I recently was talking to a, a secular friend of mine who knew that I had recently become a pastor, and he said to me, oh, I have such respect for you, I am sure at times your job can be quite thankless. I wasn't for sure at first how to respond to that comment. At first I felt offended by what, the, what he had said, and, what do you mean, my calling? And, that I have to the church is thankless. When I stopped to think about it for a bit and I thought about the shepherd of the 23rd Psalm, I could see how the shepherd at times could have seen his work as being thankless at times. But think about it, the shepherd is constantly working 
to tell these sheep where to go with a stick and where not to go. These sheep have no sense of direction. You have to constantly watch them to ensure that they are not straying off the path and that they are supposed the path that they are supposed to be walking on. There are times when you might have to go to rescue the sheep from some silly thing that they have done, like falling into a ditch, uh, as it's depicted in this video I found on YouTube. As I reflected upon the experiences of the shepherd, I could see how the pastorate at times can seem thankless, and the comment that my friend made was not intended to be an insult upon my calling, rather it is a common experience of pastors. If you are a good pastor or you are a member of the congregation that is living out the calling that Jesus has given you to feed his sheep, and you are with the people of the church, along with your community, helping them, guiding them. You will absorb all of the doubts, fears, anxieties of the people that you serve. You cannot help but carry the smell and the stench of being the shepherd around with you. One of the most important roles a shepherd has is to be a protector of the sheep. The shepherd always has to be on the lookout for predators. This is why the shepherd constantly stays with the sheep until they reach their destination, even at night sleeping where the sheep sleep. The sheep depend upon the shepherd for their safety and survival. The story of Tabitha and Peter is a story that is demonstrating to us that resurrection is a communal event, that the whole church is involved in as shepherds of God's people, and it is ongoing. It affects the whole body of Christ, and it is a reality that all of the children of God participate. When we are all together with the spirit of Tabitha, living out the calling of the church to feed God's people, that love has a tendency to impact the lives of others in such a profound way that resurrection happens and it spreads to others. Resurrection is not a one-time event that just happened to Jesus and nobody else. It is a hope for new life that all of God's beloved saints will live again and be a part of this new reality. God is ahead of us, leading us along the way to that new life. Those green pastures Along the way, there are dark valleys that we will go through, but we can trust that God has gone through and will go through those dark valleys with us. The church will also go alongside of you through those dark valleys as servants of God. We will be a mother for you when love and compassion is needed in order to help you get through those valleys. May we always, as a church, follow alongside the God of Jesus, who is our shepherd and calls us to be shepherds to those who we serve. 
May we embody the same kind of motherly love that Tabitha embodied to those who needed a shepherd to feed them. When we do this, resurrection happens and new life can be discovered in places where it had not been seen before. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear these words for the invitation to offering. We believe in the God of justice and righteousness, and God believes in us to carry forth the mission of loving and caring for community. Let us now share our gifts and resources so that we may continue to walk humbly with God and with neighbors. Amen. Now would you please stand in body or spirit, or no? <laughs> Let us begin this morning's offering.
Let us pray. We dedicate these gifts that have been shared for the fortification of the beloved community. Let these gifts do justice in the world. Let them be a sign of our belief in the God who saves, heals, and sets free. Let these gifts and the works of our hands and feet be a blessing to all in need. In Jesus' name, amen. Our sending song is an insert in your bulletin, and it is a familiar one we've been doing throughout this month as we leave this place of worship. Abide with us now and forever. 